Well, hello there, church family. I pray that each of you are doing well, that you're having a phenomenally blessed week, and that as always, you're remaining safe, strong, healthy, and protected as we continue navigating this global pandemic. Wanted to come to you for a few minutes today to share a couple key updates. I know that several weeks ago, we announced that we were planning to relaunch in-person worship experiences on Sunday, September 12th. Uh, as I've shared that with you, I've also continued to share that we would monitor the situation with the COVID-19 virus as well as the variants to assess if that was a smart move and decision for our church family. Thank you to those of you who participated in our church-wide survey, which we completed just before the Delta variant began running rampant. Thank you to those members of our relaunch task force uh, chaired by my wife and our First Lady, Dr. Jacqueline Dow, Sister Tamiko Doyle, Deaconess Wileen Davis, and Deaconess Emma Geis Gresham. Thank you for the work that you've done over the last few months to ready us, to prepare us for relaunch. Thank you for those teams of volunteers who began the process of planning and preparing yourselves for, for the relaunch of in-person worship experiences. Our health advisory team, our relaunch task force, put together a set of recommendations related to relaunching in-person worship experiences. One of those recommendations was that if our positivity rate in Cobb County reached a certain threshold, that we should reconsider relaunching in-person worship experiences. As, as of the taping of this update video, our current positivity rate is almost more than double their recommendation. When we look at what's happening, those who are being impacted by the virus, those uh, among us are children who are now in classrooms and being impacted and contracting the virus. We recognize that we need a bit more time as a community, as a church family, before we feel it is safe to relaunch in-person worship experiences. I know that's disappointing news for some of you because you were really banking on returning again physically, corporately for worship. But even though it grieves my heart to share this with you, I hope that you hear my heart and I hope that you will offer us your grace, your patience and your understanding as we continue navigating a reality, family, a reality that is literally changing by the day. We continue to hear stories of those who are being impacted by, by the virus, by the variants. Either they're being impacted personally or members of their family are. And as much as I cannot wait to relaunch in-person worship experiences, I have to prioritize the safety of our congregation in making this decision. I know, I know some of you say, well, pastor, resorts are open. The malls are open. Restaurants are open, nightclubs are open, concerts are open. They're packing out Mercedes-Benz Stadium for, for sporting events. I know just because those places are open does not mean they should be open. The reality is, as the shepherd that God has placed here at, over this flock of people, my responsibility is to care for your mind, your body, and your soul. I don't have an economic motive or agenda in us reopening. Many of the entities in our community that we see reopening, they're reopening for political and economic reasons, but God's house is focused on maintaining the safety and protection of God's people. And as God's people, I hope that you hear my heart. This isn't a decision we've come to lightly or unadvisedly, but we've labored over this decision and need just a bit more time before we believe it's safe to return. Don't worry, I can't wait to relaunch in-person worship experiences, but I wanna do so in a way that makes you comfortable, that ensures your safety, so that when we gather, our soul focus and attention will be on worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ together. However, as we continue navigating the pandemic, its variants, uh, understanding the landscape that we're now operating in, there are a number of things that we're continuing to do here at the church to ensure that we're ready for the relaunch of in-person worship experiences. Because not only do we wanna relaunch in-person worship experiences, we also wanna make sure that we're prepared to continue offering a high quality online worship opportunity as well. 
To that end, we're installing uh, live streaming cameras and a live streaming infrastructure in our sanctuary that will literally allow us to facilitate both in-person worship experiences as well as live worship experiences online on Sunday mornings. Throughout most of the pandemic, we've been pre-recording our online worship experiences. This, this next step forward, this next transformation in the life of our church is going to enable us to do it live from the sanctuary each and every Sunday morning. And soon we'll be able to add worshipers to that number safely and in a socially distanced way to ensure that everyone remains protected. Not only are we installing live streaming cameras and infrastructure, we're also installing LED screens in our sanctuary. Nine and a half by six and a half feet LED screens will adorn multiple places in our sanctuary. That's designed so that we can limit the sharing and the passing of materials so that when we relaunch in-person worship experiences, we can do so in a way that is still engaging, but that is also safe in our post-pandemic world. I know there's so many reasons to, to, to gather again physically, but the chief reason why we should wait a few more weeks is so that when we gather, we can do so safely. Here's what I need you to do in the meantime as we continue readying ourselves to relaunch in-person worship experiences. I need you to remain prayerful. I need you to continue to lift myself, our church's leaders, our church family, and all of those who are contributing to these decisions. I need you to continue lifting us in prayer that God would give us wisdom and insight, knowledge and understanding on when and how we move our congregation forward. I also need you to remain engaged. I know that it can be easy to tune out online worship, but I need you to make sure that you remain connected to worship each and every week. Even if you're not able to watch when it initially airs, make sure that you schedule time to go back and watch at a moment when you can sit down and really chew upon, meditate and receive the word of God. I need you to also begin to begin searching your heart for where you're going to commit to volunteering and serving when we return. Because when we return, when we relaunch in-person worship experiences, it's going to take a commitment from each and every one of us to make worship happen at a high level each and every week. And I pray that even now you are discerning where God wants you serving, not just on Sunday mornings, but even serving in the key ministry areas of our church. Over the next few weeks, you'll begin to hear more information. We're planning to roll out a financial empower, empowerment ministry. We're relaunching our bereavement and grief share ministry. Uh, we've established teams to relaunch our men's and our women's ministry. I've met with uh, our women in action ministry and acts that they develop proposals and plans to minister to seniors in our congregation. Our Awana team is hard at work to relaunch. We have our midweek Bible study team that is working to make sure that that's available every week, not to mention our Sunday school team who each and every week is laboring to make sure that you have an opportunity to grow in your faith. There's so much happening, but it requires that each and every one of us remain prayerful, remain committed and prepare to serve. Church family, as I always tell you, I love you. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And I want you to stay safe, get vaccinated, get your booster shot, wear your mask, Practice social distancing. Go get a COVID test. Do everything you can so that together we can get this pandemic under control. Until next time, may the Lord God bless you and keep you forever is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, family.